Hello everyone, my name is Mirvat al Asnaj and I'm an interventional cardiologist in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. And I'm here in Washington DC for TCT 2024. There have been a good number of late-breaking clinical trials this year, both in the coronary space and the structural space. In the structural space, um, there is a lot of focus on uh, aortic stenosis and early replacement um, trials that have been actually very much anticipated by the community. The first one is the early TAVR trial that really looked at patients with severe aortic stenosis and were asymptomatic at enrollment. Now these patients was about 900 patients randomized um, to a watchful waiting strategy versus early re uh, replacement. And of course they tried to trigger uh, symptoms using exercise treadmill tests on these patients. And the primary endpoint, um, a composite of all cause death, strokes and um, unplanned hospitalizations for cardiovascular uh, causes was actually much lower in the early uh, replacement arm compared with clinical surveillance occurring at 45.3 percent in the surveillance compared with 26.8 um, percent in those who got early replacement so it's actually a very promising trial some of the other trials that were actually presented here um, that looked at early intervention for severe aortic stenosis were not as positive but nevertheless, we learned from them. One of them was the EVOLVE trial that looked at 224 patients who had um, severe aortic stenosis, but were also underwent cardiac magnetic resonance imaging to look at um, fibrosis, and they quantified the fibrosis. And then strat uh, str randomized these patients to either early replacement compared with uh, watchful waiting again. Um, and unfortunately, the uh, total number of patients enrolled was about 224, uh, 100 and, uh, plus, 110 plus in each arm. Um, but this was a negative trial. Nevertheless, I think it still means we need to intensify medical therapy, uh, perhaps understand the role of intracoronary, uh, sorry, of um, imaging to stratify these patients, and maybe uh, assess patients with low um, flow, low gradient aortic stenosis. The last trial was less a trial on uh, aortic valve replacement and more a uh, heart failure trial. This was the TAVR unload uh, study that was done. Um, initially they had wanted to enroll over 300 patients but they actually ended up with less than 200 patients, about 150 patients. And they randomized these patients with low ejection fraction and moderate aortic stenosis to either watchful waiting and optimization of guideline directed medical therapy versus early replacement and, and again it did not meet uh, the primary the uh, significance for the primary endpoint now remember it took a long time to recruit the patients they ended up terminating it early not so it was really underpowered to give them the information that they actually needed um, and guideline-directed medical therapy, when this trial was initially started and designed, was very different than what it is today with the four pillars. So I'm just wondering if a trial like this is done again, and given the chance to go to completion, would there actually be a difference? Uh, it's something for us to look at. And now moving on to the coronary space, an interesting trial that again was much anticipated is the ECLIPSE trial, that looked at patients with intracoronary, with coronary calcification and were managed with uh, modification using orbital atherectomy compared with balloon angioplasty. And they did use optical coherence tomography and the endpoints for, these, um, for this trial was actually looking at target vessel failure at one year and looking at minimum stent area with uh, OCT. And the, about 2,000 patients were included in this trial. Orbital atherectomy and um, balloon angioplasty alone had very similar target vessel failure and MSA uh, reported at the end of the trial. Why was it negative? Well, perhaps you know the, intra the role of intracoronary imaging here was done after the fact. And so initially they recruited patients based on fluoroscopy. So I'm just wondering if these patients, in fact, as Gary Mintz mentioned during the, during the um, TCT meeting and during the discussions, that perhaps these patients, if we had done intracoronary imaging, it would not have warranted atherectomy because it's deep calcium and not superficial calcium that needs modification. Again, so probably um, changes in the design of this trial, uh, looking at longer term outcomes. But, you know, looking at the results of orbital atherectomy, that should not impact other modification tools such as rotablation and shockwave lithotripsy. 
but it, none of the trials that we have at, at the moment look at head-to-head -head comparisons between them. As an interventional cardiologist, for me, perhaps the endpoint should not be really just looking at target vessel failure, but actually immediate success. I don't think any interventional cardiologist will be implanting a stent in a lesion that is yet to yield and hasn't yielded to balloon uh, angioplasty. So, um, you know, w without boring you, the other trials that were presented in the coronary space really focused a lot on physiology. So looking at pullback gradients presented by Carlos Colette post-PCI uh, was very intriguing and looking at some of the others that looked at multi-vessel PCI guided by uh, intracoronary physiology, some of the CMR trials as well. So I think this space in terms of intracoronary physiology and the trials that are still in the pipeline are going to be interesting to look at. Um, some of the trials such as the Os uh, Cosmic AS trial that looked at using physiology to guide coronary disease in intermediate lesions with patients with AS, yes, you can use it. So that's a lot of space here that um, was very useful for us. Um, and I think after the guidelines have upgraded the use of intracoronary physiology, we will probably see a lot more use in clinical practice and hopefully more trials will come in the pipeline. So thank you and hope to see you another time.